Hey guys, so for today's video in this series, I decided to take a look at the Dodge Ram SRT10. I do have a whole series of these types of videos, and I've already done many Dodge, Chrysler, and Ram vehicles, and also Jeep as well, so check out my playlist in the top right corner if you're interested. In these videos, the first part focuses on looking back at the history of the car, and all the details and specs, and then we jump to talking about the events that led to the car being cancelled, and any flaws that it had. The Ram SRT10 gained notoriety as one of the coolest trucks you could buy, a flashy head turner that came with a huge Viper V10 engine. The truck had a short life with just three model years, introduced in 2004 and gone after 2006. So let's begin back in 2002. Early in January of 2002, Dodge would introduce the Ram SRT10 concept at the North American International Auto Show. Without getting into too many details, the early origins of SRT started way back in 1989 as Team Viper, where Chrysler had selected 85 engineers for the development and production of the first gen Viper. The next phase was in the late 90s with another team known as Team Prowler, where Chrysler chose what they called the Dirty Dozen of Engineers, picking some of the best but also bad-tempered, argumentative, and uncooperative engineers from Chrysler to help get the Prowler put together. So Team Prowler and Team Viper would merge to become Specialty Vehicle Engineering, or SVE, and then that would get renamed to Performance Vehicle Operations, or PVO, from January 2002 until 2004. And after that, the team is renamed to SRT, which is the name on this RAM. So the point of the story is that the RAM SRT-10 was created by the Performance Vehicle Operations just before they became the SRT team, using both the Viper and the Prowler engineers and the first Ram SRT-10 was built on November 10th of 2003. If we look at the trim levels, 2004 started with just a regular cab with a price tag of $45,000 US. The following years added a quad cab, which is about $5,000 more than the regular, bringing the cost just over $50,000. If we look at the inflation table, we can see that that cost is between sixty dollars to $67,000 in today's dollars, which is a pretty fair and reasonable price, so these were definitely not cheap, but the Ram 1500 TRX, for example, starts at around $71,000, and the Ford F-150 Raptors in the mid-$50,000 range before any options are added. Now let's take a look at the exterior of this Ram truck. All the 3rd gen Rams had a very bold and distinctive appearance, with the big in-your-face crosshair grill and Freightliner fenders. However, Ram didn't go too crazy when differentiating the SRT-10 from the other trim levels. The SRT-10 has a unique billet grill insert with some body-colored crosshairs, the hood is unique to the SRT with a wide power bulge and a scoop sitting above the grill, and the scoop is multifunctional, allowing cool air in and forcing hot air out. Beside the scoop, you could find the Viper-powered lettering to show off what you had under the hood. More on that, of course, in the performance section of the video. Chrome SRT-10 logos were added on the two front doors and the right side of the tailgate in 2004 and 2005, but for 06 they were changed to chrome and red, similar to the SRT-8 badges that were later found on the Charger and Challenger. If we look to the back of the truck, another exclusive feature is the wing on the tailgate that provides 165 pounds of downforce, as well as helping with airflow and reducing lift and drag. 2005 quad cab models and all the 2006 models were supposed to have a tonneau cover with an attached spoiler standard, I'll try to throw a picture up on screen, but there were manufacturing problems and many of them still got the regular spoiler, so owners got a $1,000 credit for their troubles. As for the two models, again, a 2004 offered just the regular cab, which was 120.5 inches long. 2005 and 2006 also offered a quad cab version that was 140.5 inches long. For both, the standard bed length was 6 feet 3 inches, but an 8 foot bed was available for either of them. And with the bigger bed, the quad cab stretched to 160.5 inches, but that was just 3 inches longer than the long bed extended cab models from the competition Ford and Chevy. Before we move on, we can take a look at some of the colors. So these exclude the special editions. I will talk about those later on in the video, but there were some special editions for the SRT-10, and you might see some of those pictures on screen mixed in as well. But the 2004 and 2005 Ram SRT-10 came in just three colors, black clear coat, bright silver metallic clear coat, and flame red clear coat. 2006 got a few more colors, five in total, mineral gray metallic, inferno red crystal pearl coat, Brilliant Black Crystal Clear Coat, Flame Red Clear Coat, and Black Clear Coat. So again, anything you see that's yellow, blue, striped, that sort of thing, those are all special editions, and I will cover those later in the video. Moving inside, there are some subtle cues to let you know that this isn't an ordinary RAM. Silver accents were found on the doors, center stack, shifter bezel, and dashboard, and there was an SRT-10 logo on the passenger side. 
These seats are heavily bolstered, and you can see three people up front in the regular cab. The driver and passenger seats have preferred suede that will keep your ass glued to the seats with leather trim and big side bolsters finished in charcoal gray. The leather wrapped steering wheel was a simple four spoke design new for 2004. The SRT10 also gets a white instrument cluster with satin silver gauges and Viper font and graphics. Just like its Viper relative, there is a sporty red push start button along with aluminum pedals and a hearse shifter with a Viper shift knob for all the trucks that came with a manual transmission. Finally, for the sound system, there were three different options. You could get eight speakers with an LCD screen with DVD and navigation, a CD system with a small LCD screen, and a basic LED radio with a CD player. All the audio came from Infinity, and all the systems had a 10-inch subwoofer between the seats and 575 watts of output. Now we can look at the performance, which of course is the major reason why anyone would buy this truck. The SRT10 features the Chrysler 8.3 liter V10, first used in the 2003 third generation Dodge Viper. Both the regular cab and quad cab have the same performance output, 500 horsepower and 525 pound-feet of torque, and the engine did deliver 90% of the torque from 1500 to 5600 RPMs. The one major difference here was that the transmission used a Tremec T56 six-speed manual transmission, while the quad cab could only be had with a 48RE four-speed automatic taken from the Ram heavy-duty turbo diesel Cummins truck. The 4-speed auto was rated to handle up to 700 pound-feet of torque, and both the regular and quad cabs had the Dana 60 rear axle. The quad cab was meant to be an option for buyers that wanted a performance truck, along with the extra room for passengers and better towing capability, getting a 4.56 final drive gear ratio and a 7,500 pound towing capacity. We will discuss that 4-speed auto in more detail soon, because that was a major flaw of the truck. The other quad cab downsides were the extra weight and inferior gas mileage, so the regular cab had a curb weight of 5,130 pounds, but the quad cab was almost 500 pounds heavier, weighing in at 5,618 pounds. Gas mileage was rated at 9 city and 15 highway for the regular, and 9 city and 12 highway for the quad cab, and of course that would also impact the performance times. Whereas the regular cab could do 0-60 to 60 in 4.9 seconds, and the quarter mile in 13.6 seconds, the quad cab was a bit slower, hitting 0-60 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, and the quarter mile in 13.7 seconds. Top speed was also a little bit faster on the regular cab, 154 miles per hour, compared to 147 miles per hour on the quad. The suspension would be heavily modified from the regular Ram trucks. The PVO engineers took the rack and pinion and the independent front suspension from the Ram Heavy Duty again, and they custom tuned the suspension, which dropped the truck 1 inch in the front and 2.5 inches in the rear, with Bilstein shock absorbers and performance tuned springs. They even added a fifth shock on the rear axle to try to prevent wheel hop when launching and spinning the wheels. Rounding out the performance and the exterior look were huge 10-spoke wheels that copied the Viper look, and they were 22 by 10 inches all the way around, with 305-40 R22 Pirelli Scorpion tires. Hiding behind the wheels were 15-inch front rotors and 14-inch Ram Heavy Duty rotors in the back. 2004 models got red painted, two piston brake calipers front and rear, and they were replaced with four piston calipers in the front for 2005 and 2006. <laughs> Now before we move on to the cancellation and flaws, there are a few different interesting things to mention regarding the SRT10. So in July of 2004, NASCAR driver Brendan Gaughan set the Guinness World Record and Sports Car Club of America record for the world's fastest production truck hitting 154.587 miles per hour in a Ram SRT10. He actually reached even higher speeds of 157.327 miles per hour, but that truck had an illegal exhaust and the record was not allowed to stand. I also want to take a look at some of the rare special editions of this truck. We will cover four of them. The first is the Viper Club of America edition, or VCA, with just 52 produced, but two of those were Chrysler Pace vehicles, and we're not sure where those are now. 
These were released at the Daytona Motor Speedway race in February of 2004, where people entered into a raffle and the winners of the raffle could purchase the VCA. The winners could also sell the vehicle if they wanted to after purchasing. These looked stunning with electric blue paint and white stripes, and the engine was signed by Wolfgang Bernard, the former COO of Chrysler. As I said, 50 copies were made with a manual transmission, while two were converted into the automatic as the pace vehicles. In 2005, there was an exclusive yellow fever model, painted in solar yellow, and they ended up making 497 of those. So these versions had the solar yellow paint and a black stripe on the hood scoop area on the outside. On the inside, there was a two-tone interior with a yellow center stack, yellow door spears, yellow stitching on the seats, steering wheel and shifter, and yellow on the floor mats. These also came with a serialized dash plaque and exterior badging. Another similar yet exclusive version was a 2005 commemorative edition, which featured bright white painted SRT10s with electric blue stripes going from the hood scoop to the edge of the deck lid. The interior had blue stitching on the seat shifter and steering wheel, special floor mats, and brushed aluminum scuff plates. Just 201 of these ended up being made. The final rare SRT10 to cover is the 2006 Night Runner with just 370 copies painted in brilliant black. These had dark nickel pearl wheels, black chrome accents, unique badges, black interior bezels, and a Night Runner dash plaque as well. So of course the Ram SRT10 production ended after the 2006 model year, and that brings us to the next part of the video, looking at the reasoning for the cancellation and the flaws of the Ram SRT10. I've come up with 8 different reasons and or flaws that refer to the car or Chrysler decisions, so let's have a look. The first reason is that this was never intended to be a long term volume seller for Dodge, but instead more of a collector's car. It wasn't viable to produce long term, and there was relatively low demand for it, because let's face it, how many people were buying 500 horsepower V10 trucks in 2005? The target market was older, wealthier males, and over the three years of production, those who wanted one stepped up and forked over their $45,000 to $50,000 plus, and everyone else just admired them in awe and shock from a distance, as they were fishtailing on the 305 Pirellis wherever they went, while stopping for gas every 30 minutes it seems. The second reason is that Dodge didn't need the SRT10 financially. In all reality, it did sell better than I would have expected, over 10,046 trucks over the three production years with 2005 being the most popular year and 2006 the least. To put that into perspective, Ram pickup trucks overall were selling over 400,000 units in these years, so that means the Ram SRT10 sales were just 0.5 to 1% of that, so it wasn't a huge financial concern for Dodge to lose just a few thousand truck sales. A third reason was that Dodge raised the engine capacity for the Viper V10 to 8.4 liters and bumped up power to 600 horsepower and 560 pound-feet of torque for the fourth generation Viper ZB2. Dodge would have had to make improvements and adaptations to the Ram to account for this new engine, and they didn't see it financially worthwhile or feasible to create everything for a new SRT10 model, especially since that it wasn't one of their flagship vehicles like the Viper was, and it wasn't going to create a whole lot of return on investment. So that's another major reason the SRT10 was cancelled after 2006, because the 4th gen Viper production began in 2007. So now we can look to some flaws, and I'll start with the easiest one, that being the 4-speed transmission. And of course these flaws aren't really responsible for the cancellation of the vehicle, but it's just part of the flaws section now. The first three reasons pretty much covered the cancellation. But remember the 2004-2006 to regular cab was available only with the 6-speed manual, but 2005 and 06 quad cabs were available only with the 4-speed auto. So the first flaw here is that the 4-speed is a pretty lame transmission to put into a Viper-powered truck. I could understand it as an option, but no, the quad cab forced you to take the auto since you could only get the manual on the regular cab. The stock 4-speed just isn't cut out for the performance that people bought this truck for, and swapping to a manual was not really an option as it was very difficult, requiring many different parts, and the drive shaft also needs to be stretched by 12 inches to account for the manual transmission which could open up a whole new can of worms, like being unbalanced or adding physical stress. Continuing with the 4-speed, it turned out to have tons of issues for hundreds of owners. I did some research on some SRT10 forums and found tons of posts complaining of quad cab 4-speed issues. One notable issue is the transmission belt called the kickdown band, which gets fried if you mash the gas pedal while you're going above 60 to 70 miles per hour. Many of these were not adjusted properly from the factory. Others failed due to the band material peeling and choking and then starving the transmission from getting the proper lubrication. The training fluids must also be maintained very meticulously. So that 4-speed in the SRT10 just had a lot of issues, even at low mileage. Other common flaws would include oil cooler lines leaking, power steering lines leaking, and clutch hydraulics needing upgrades. 
basically any Gen 3 Viper issues with the drivetrain passed on to the SRT-10 as well, but you'd hope a truck is a little more reliable than a Viper, and that wasn't always the case. This next one is a quick one, but the parts were hard to find and quite expensive. Similar to how Rolls-Royce uses many BMW parts but then jacks up the price 10 times higher due to the name, the Viper and SRT-10 use many standard Chrysler parts, but would charge what we call the Viper tax and increase the price exponentially, making things more expensive just because it was Viper related. And of course the truck wasn't a volume seller and neither was the Viper, so there aren't a ton of parts available as the truck got older. This last flaw is just nitpicking, but I thought I'd talk about it anyways. That would be the extremely low gas mileage as we went over before, 9 MPG city and 15 MPG highway for the regular cab, and 9 city and 12 highway MPG for the quad cab. Of course, that's the EPA number, so the real life was even lower. Even owners on forums who knew what they were getting into still complained about the mileage, and it made the truck extremely expensive to drive too much. So that's the end of this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you enjoyed it. It was definitely a loaded topic, but I tried my best to give you guys as much information as I possibly could. What do you think about the Dodge Ram SRT10? Did you ever own one? And how do you think it compares to the new 2021 Ram 1500 TRX? Let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.